All right. This is my second topic. This is my second topic for the day. This is a very important topic too, man. I see a lot of people that are anti-Christ and have the mark of the beast on them, yet they're professing themselves to be righteous, to be believers in God and so forth like that. And the scriptures clearly tell you who the antichrist is and who the beast is and what is the mark of the beast. Yet a lot of these people and their people, and the Savior speaks about that, that in the last days, many antichrists shall come. So let's go into the scriptures, no talking. Let's go directly to the scriptures and see if he doesn't say that. He didn't say that there would be one antichrist. He said that in the last days, there shall be many antichrists. Okay? So let's go up in the New Testament. Let's go up in the New Testament. Anti means opposite and against. So let me give you a visual of antichrist. It's going to offend a lot of people, but I don't care. Bang. See that? This dude here with the long hair, see, looking like the devil, is Antichrist. Bang. He's not the son of God, okay? He's not the son of God. He's not the king of kings. He's not the Lord of lords. So, therefore, he's Antichrist. Okay, when you take that title, you're taken away from the Lord and his son. Okay, so let's go up into Peter's. No, not Peter's. Let's continue with this. Let's go in the book of First John, the second chapter, and let's see how you antichrist. And how you have the mark of the beast. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, so that's why I don't deal with sports anymore. A lot of people is always dealing, yo, you know, I see a lot of these so-called Israelites talking about sports. You know, and baseball and basketball and their love of this stuff and football. He says, love not the world. That's of the world. Neither the things that are in the world. So you got to start to cleanse yourself, man. You know, you got to look at the scriptures, okay? If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So believe me, I take that to heart, you know. I try to keep myself tight, man, because you got to break things. You got to let things go because the devil, which is the flesh, be working on you, be working on you, he works on me. You know, I never jump around and say I'm perfect, you know, a lot of people say that they perfect. They keep the law. They perfect. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So when you're proud of this world and you teach the religions of this world and you teach the philosophies of this world and you talk about uh, Hail Selassie and Rastafarianism and all that and Jah Rastafari, it's not a game, man. You're going to be held accountable for what you have done. You're going to be held accountable for this madness in believing that this man is an Israelite. You're going to be held accountable for that. Okay? So this is the mark of the beast. This philosophy is the mark of the beast. Okay? Watch. And the world passes away. What is the world passing away? It's talking about the empires of this time. It's going to pass away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Father abide it forever. Watch what the Christ tell you now. Little children, it is the last time. What times are we in? We in the last time. And as ye have heard, Antichrist, now he's speaking of one, the concept. That's what he's speaking about. He says Antichrist. So what does the word Antichrist mean? Opposite. Antichrist shall come. Even now, there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. So that's how he said, now you know what days and what times that you're in because you can very easily be Antichrist in the last time. So what is Antichrist? When you have this mark in your mind, 
that somehow you're going to move and translate to the kingdom of heaven. And this is what the kingdom of heaven. But wait a minute. Nowhere in the Bible is there any verse that says that this garbage is going to be anywhere in the Bible. Nowhere. So this is Antichrist. Who is this guy? This is Caesar Borgia, second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. See that? So this is the lie that is fabricated in your mind, and therefore that makes you Antichrist. So when you have these pictures and your belief, you are Antichrist and you have the mark of the beast because they are Edomites. All these pictures are Edomites. Those are not the people of the Lord. That's how you are Antichrist. Because you believe this garbage. You believe this garbage. Okay? You believe this garbage. You are Antichrist. You have the mark of the beast. Now, this is Roman Catholicism, which is called the whore. Okay? Um, in Revelation, we're going to go into that. Right? As I touch on time, we're going to go into that. This is called the whore. This is Revelation, the 12th chapter right here. The woman that was in heaven that John saw, but it wasn't the white woman. The 12 tribes, the, the 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Now look who they try to make it like she's so perfect and so forth like that. See the madness? So where does this go? Right inside your head. You believe that garbage. You believe that garbage. Okay, that's antichrist. That's the mark of the beast inside your head. Let's go some more images of the mark of the beast, okay? So we're, here we have, from Time Life, books, okay? So this got to keep being done because people believe this garbage, okay? Millions of people believe in this garbage. I want you to look really, really well. This is the mark of the beast that you have to take out and not deal with inside your mind. Because these are lies. See all the demons and false gods? These gods do not exist. They do not exist. That is the mark of the beast. They do not exist anywhere in the universe. How do we know that those gods do not exist? Let's, uh, so I showed you about Antichrist, right? Then I'm going to show you the beast. There are five beasts in the Bible. There are five beasts that leads from the first beast and how this madness of the mark of the beast came. But how do we know that these gods are false? All right? Let's go in the book of Isaiah. Let's see how we know that these gods are false. Isaiah 45. First, let's destroy the concept of Jehovah Witness. So when you have these, and this concept was created uh, actually by one man by the name of Charles Taze Russell, who originally was called Russellites, and then eventually it morphed into Jehovah Witness. But where did they get the word and the concept from? Uh, Isaiah 43, verse 10. It says, you are my witnesses, said the Lord now. How do I know that? Because they used to come to my house. And this is the verse that they used to say, that, well, this is why. Uh, for Jehovah, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, right, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. But there was no religion when the Lord was talking to Isaiah called Jehovah Witness. Isaiah was talking to the nation of Israel. The Lord was using him, Okay and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God form. See that? So all these false gods, and also I'm gonna go into religion of the Egyptian gods, the Egyptian false pantheons. Before me, there was no God, see that? Neither shall there be, neither shall there be after me. Isaiah 43 verse 11. Even I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. So these demons do not exist, okay? 
Let's, let's get a couple more verses. Isaiah 44, verse 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told ye from told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye, Israel, are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Is there a God besides me? Look, man, this is what the Indians have created. Look at their gods. Vishuni, okay, Brahma, Pravati, Usha. Look at their gods. Look at their gods. Now the Lord is saying, is there a God besides me? He says, yeah, there is no God. I know not any. They are making a graven image. Are all of them vanity and the delectable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know not, that they may be ashamed. Who have formed a God or a molten or a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Those concepts are antichrist. Those concepts are antichrist. So let's go to the mark of the beast. Let's go to the mark of the beast. Right? So let's see who is the first beast. Now this is a short. This can take next three months breaking this down. This is a short. Who is the first beast? Let's jump to Genesis. Go on straight to it. Genesis the third chapter. Genesis, the third chapter. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord power had made. Bang. The serpent, what serpent? Sure. Let's go up into Revelation. Look, beginning and end. This guy is here. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. What did he do? Which deceived the whole world. See that? Here we go. So he didn't deceive just Israelites. He deceived these clowns into thinking that he is the king of kings and lord of lords. See that? Deception. Deception. The whole world was deceived by the devil. So now you got Roman Catholicism and their madness. So if you got this picture up in your house, it's Antichrist. See that? Visuals. Look at them. This is Caesar Borgia. See that cat right there? Caesar Borgia, second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Now, black people actually believe that when they die, they're going to change and go to heaven, see? And they're going to become white people. That's what y'all think in your minds. Wait. Wait. That it said the devil deceived the whole world. So when the Roman Catholic Church came out from out of Italy, they put these pictures up. Mark of the beast, Antichrist. They brought that to you in your churches you still go to, that your aunts, your uncles, and everybody still go to. See that? Mark of the beast. So what did the devil do? He went down to India. See that? And deceived people. Mark of the beast. Dang. Revelation 12, verse 9. And deceived the whole world. So now we found out who the first beast is. That's the spiritual head. And it says, and deceived the whole world. So who did he deceive now? Let's go to the book of Daniel. Let's go to the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter now. Let's break it down. 
In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. And he wrote the dream and told us some of the matters. And Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Now I'm breaking it down to you again. The beast is no more than kingdoms. The sea is people. And out of each group of people, they're going to set up with their thoughts, their kingdom, as to how they think it should go. Now, the Lord already knew this, okay? So he's letting it go down. But these cats is going to develop their own philosophies. So you can go and look this stuff up historically. Get your archaeological records and look this stuff up. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked up. The wings thereof is talking about warfare. The lion and the eagle's wings was a, what's called symbolically a griffin. Okay, This kingdom, and I have books on this, this kingdom is the Babylonian kingdom, the first beast. Now, there are many other nations around, okay? But the Lord's not dealing with them. This is who he's dealing with. So the first beast was the Babylonian kingdom, which the region, okay, the region would be over there um, in Iraq, around that region where you have the, the Tigris and the Euphrates uh, rivers and stuff like that. I could always pull that up anytime you ask me to, right? That's not a problem. It says when the wings thereof were plucked, right, they couldn't move. A wing allow you to fly. So when they went down to warfare, right, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and the man's heart was given to him. And behold, another beast, a second like a beer. Okay, this is the Persian and the Mede empire under King Darius, right? So if you see that movie 300, you're looking actually at the beginning of the coming of the Greeks dealing with Xerxes, who is in the uh, Apocrypha, right? So nothing is just formulated. Everything comes with historical fact. And if you don't study history, you're not going to understand the Bible, okay? And behold, another beast, a second like a bear. So this is the second beast. And it raised itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it. See, warfare. And it be, and between the teeth of it, and they said unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Right? So the Persians and the Medes took down the Babylonian Empire. This is historical fact. And after this I beheld and lo, like another, like a leopard, which had on the back of it four wings of a fowl. And the beast had forehead and dominion was given to him. The third beast coming now is the Greek Empire under Alexander the Great. So you must have your Apocrypha for you to see that. That's why you have in the Apocrypha 1st Maccabees and 2nd Maccabees. Okay? Historical fact. Because Daniel deals a lot with the Greek Empire. And the fourth beast now, and after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, and it devoured. So the Roman Empire now took down the Greek Empire. When Rome came out with the Caesars, they took down the Greeks. They took down the Greeks. We now, wait, I'm, I'm going to just break it down. So a fourth beast, now I don't have any maps to show you. I did that before, and it had great iron teeth. The iron teeth is talking about the swords that the Roman legions used to use for them to win uh, victories and so forth like that. Now, the Roman legion has morphed into the United States military and their guns and so forth and nuclear bombs and planes, iron teeth, teeth bite, sword stick, guns kill. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns. The 10 horns is the 10 empires that it broke up into 
after Rome fell apart. So Europe began to split up. You must study history. And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up from among them another little horn. That little horn is America, okay? Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Once again, you must study history because the three horns that America, the one horn, came out of. So let's say this is France, Britain, and Spain. America now came from out of her. America came from out of her. So you got to understand something called the, the British Revolution. Then from there, you got to understand that America fought France. And that's the splitting of Canada and the upper states, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, all those states up there. There was war with the North American Indians and the Europeans. That's how Spain, uh, that's how France uh, got, you know, um, Quebec, Montreal. You got to study this stuff because that's what the Bible is talking about. Okay. The three horns and then Spain. Spain had uh, down in Florida, Mexico, um, Texas, parts of California. Okay. So these things spiritually morphed into the, the way the Lord, exactly how the Lord is saying that it would come. And behold, in this horn were the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. So they now, America is leading the world. And this is where the Edomite Empire is at. So America comes from out of Britain. Britain comes from out of Rome. See that? That's the Trump variant coming back. Okay? So letting you see the four beasts now. So we now, so just so you won't uh, lose your mind about us being in the fourth beast, right? Remember, the word beast means that they were opposite the way of the Lord. So how do we know that America is just like Rome? Number one, she has a president. A president in Rome was a Caesar. Number two, she had two sides, Republicans and senators. America's got the same thing. Only thing now, they just call them Democrats. See that? So Rome basically transferred the same Europeans and so forth, white people, Italians, transferred themselves over here with their concepts. But wait a minute. The American money is in Latin. Bang. See that? It's in Latin. Rome speaks Latin. But what does it say right here? See that? It says, uno ordo secularium. In one secular order. One secular order, which is the mark of the beast. Okay? So now, when you are in these different kingdoms and you follow their ways, okay, when you follow their ways, that makes you Antichrist. That makes you Antichrist. So let's come back to that in the mark of the beast now. So now I've showed you the beast. Number one, which is the devil. Then I showed you the four empires upon the earth. Okay, and I showed you historically where we are in this battle, America in this battle. So you have to turn around now and look at yourself. And Christ told you that this is the last days and many people shall be anti-Christ, okay, in the last days and times. So now let's go up. Let's go up now to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation, the 13th chapter. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. So when you go to your religions now, they draw these mystical creatures coming out of the ocean. That's not what it's talking about. Okay? With heads and dragons and all these things. It's symbolic of countries. That's what it is. 
having seven heads and ten horns. This is talking about Rome. Rome was built on seven hills. The ten horns is ten governments of other empires that split off from Rome. Okay, that split off from Rome when Rome fell apart. Okay. And upon his head, the names of blasphemy. So let me visually show you the names of blasphemy. See that? This is blasphemy. Look at this dude. Look at this gay ass dude. Look at him. Look at him. This is what you go to church. A lot of our people are caught up in this. Okay, look at this. Blasphemy. And they worshiped the dragon, fourth verse, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? And who is able to make war with him? America. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. See, everybody's given a time span. All kingdoms is given a time span. So they are going to come down. They are going to come down whether you like it, you know, whether you don't like it, the Lord said they are going to come down. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against the Lord to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. The Israelites are the saints of the Lord and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth. So what does that mean? So when, when they went out in the age of exploration and conquest from out of Italy under Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama, uh, Magellan, Age of exploration of Amerigo Vespucci, all these different cats that found America, right? They found other people. They went all the way to India to buy ships. They found they found other places. Okay. And all that dwell upon the earth should worship him, whose names was not written in the book of the Lamb of Life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. See how the Lord said? So they led us into captivity, they shall go into captivity. Wait, let me read that again. They're not getting out. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must Wait, so they killed us with the sword. All these nations killed us with the sword. The Lord said they must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Wait, let's move on. And I beheld another beast, another empire, coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Good. So he had two horns. Democrats and Republicans, two sides, strong and soft. And he spake as a dragon. A dragon is a snake, a serpentine creature that's got a forked tongue. So they'll tell you one thing and then lie on another side, lie on another side and come back to another side. That's why the North American Indian said, white man speak with forked tongue, lie, break contracts, okay? And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. See that? To worship. Okay. And he do it great wonders, so he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. You know how they made fire come down? With planes and bombs. So when they dropped a nuclear bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 
a mushroom fireball exploded. Look at all their wars. Look at all their wars. They make fire come down from heaven. When they bombed Europe to hell, okay, they used strata fortress, strato fortress bombers that carpet bombed, that dropped hundreds of bombs like carpet, like you laying carpet. And when the bombs drop, fire comes down from heaven. See, you got to study history, man. So these people do it great wonders. What wonder? So he make it fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. <coughs> you know another way that that's true? Go to the Vietnam War. Go to the Vietnam War. And look up something called... Um, they used to drop bombs in Vietnam. And the bombs... Oh, napalm. Napalm. These are the bombs. Okay, very deadly thing, man. Because when they drop the napalm on the, on the jungle, it would run the gel would run for like four blocks and it would explode into fire a very hot anything near that you're being burned up so they would just drop one bomb from out of the plane see it says and he make it fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men wait so now you've seen the beast right Christ said that he is antichrist and the time is now and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. So now it's like a miracle. It's, it's like, yo, this is amazing. Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. There we go. Make an image. Here's the image. Here is the image. See, breaking it down visually for you again. Visual. See that? See the image? Where that dude? Can't leave that dude out. Can't leave that dude out. This is the image. That they should make an image which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image. This image right here, if I took this image and went out on Church Avenue, and told people to step on it, they would not step on it. They are so scared of this image. See that? This image. So it has life to it. People pray to it. People believe in it. It has life. And the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship. So if you was not believing in Christianity and Roman Catholicism, now we're not talking about Christianity in the Bible. We're talking about Roman Catholicism, which is the mark of the beast. He calls it all, both small and rich, great and poor, bond and free, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads, that no man should be able to buy nor sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of of a man, and his number is three score and six, six, six. So, for a short, gave you the first beast, gave you what Antichrist is. Then I gave you the four beasts that is in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, the four empires. Then I took you up into Revelation, the 13th chapter now, in the spirit. And gave you the complete breakdown of the mark of the beast. Now, there's a whole lot more. This is just short. Take yourself out of these things. Wait. This is what the Lord is going to tell you. Staying in Revelation. Revelation 18, verse 4. Listen to what the Lord is going to tell you, man. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. Come out of her, my people, be, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that that you receive not of her plagues. I'm going to start at um, Revelation 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with another strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen. America is Babylon. You was brought here. Wait, let me go to the book of Micah. All right, I got to go. I'm out. I'm closing up. I'm closing up. So I got to go. I'll pick it up again at another point. Peace.